Welcome to Sage Audio. Today, let's cover how to use FabFilter Pro Q3. But first, if you have a mix that you need to have mastered, send it to us to receive a free mastered sample of it with the link in the description. Reduce masking with Collision. Instead of covering basic aspects of the EQ, let's look solely at this plugin's more advanced functions. Now, the Show Collisions function indicates areas of potential masking when you monitor a signal and sidechain another. For example, if I place the EQ on my bass and sidechain the kick or the drum loop, I'll likely find aggressive overlap in the low frequency range. From there, I can determine which frequencies I want to attenuate. Let's take a listen to an overlapping signal and reduce the red areas indicated by the collision detection. Using the Match EQ function. The Match function lets you match a signal to that of a side change signal. First, I'd insert the plugin and side chain the signal that I want to match it to. Then, I'll set the side chain as my reference and play the track and pick the number of bands. I can delete any extreme bands or ones that don't affect the desired frequency range. So let's take a listen to a signal being matched to another and notice how the Pro Q3 does a good job at matching the two. If you're enjoying the video, hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. It's free and it helps us bring you more videos. Trying inverse EQ matching. If I want a signal to sound opposite to another, or if I want some more separation between two signals, I could first match them like I did in the last chapter. Then I could highlight all bands after I deleted any extreme ones and use the gain dial to invert their gain. Now, everything that would have made them match is causing them to separate from one another. Let's take a listen to how this helps separate signals. Balance with Spectrum Grab. Spectrum Grab is an interesting tool. When it's enabled, we can hover over the spectrum until it turns purple, at which point we can grab any section and affect it. Now, I found that this is useful for balancing a spectrum quickly. For example, it makes finding vocal sibilance super simple. Since the highest amplitude frequencies will be indicated, it's really easy to see what a signal might have too much of. So let's take a listen to this being used on a vocal to balance out the sound. All at once I can see it put back together you could call it a vision or a tether using it in parallel when you use this eq as a parallel signal or on an auxiliary track it might make sense to use the linear phase function to avoid any phase cancellation now i'd recommend this whenever you're using a high pass filter or other type of filter with a slope that's greater than 18 dB per octave. So let's take a listen to a signal being sent to a parallel track with this EQ on it, and notice how we can hear really audible phase cancellation if linear phase is not enabled. All at once I can see it put back together Isolating signal into bands. Building off the ideas of the last chapter, I like to use the Pro Q3 to separate a mix into three bands. I'll create three instances of the track and insert the Pro Q3 on each using low latency linear phase. Then I'll isolate the frequency ranges. Now, if I set the crossover frequencies correctly, I'll have my full original signal, but now isolated into ranges that I can affect individually. Let's take a listen to each range.
Today's video is brought to you by Editor's Keys, a developer of shortcut keyboards and keyboard covers. Now, since I use Logic Pro, I could try their wireless keyboard that showcases all of Logic Pro's shortcuts on the buttons. Or, if I wanted to keep the keyboard that I already have, I could try one of the covers designed to fit whichever computer I'm using. They also have keyboards and covers for Ableton, FL Studio, Pro Tools, and more, as well as ones designed for video and editing software. So check them out using the link in the description. Affecting in-key notes. One often overlooked aspect of the Pro-Q3 is the piano roll. Now this lets you snap the frequency of each filter to a specific note. For example, say I know that the note B is in key with the song that I'm working on. I could find it within the piano roll and then amplify it. Or if I know that a note is out of the song's key, I could attenuate it. So let's take a listen to a mix's in-key notes being amplified. If you're enjoying the channel, use the search box to watch more of our videos. Widening the stereo image. The quickest way to widen the stereo image is to go to the output, click the left-right icon, which switches to mid-side, and then pan the output towards the side. Now, if you wanted this imaging to be frequency specific, create filters and change their stereo placement. For example, I could widen the highest frequencies with a high shell filter on the side image. Let's take a listen to mid-side and left-right filters being used to widen the track. Dynamic phase reduction. In chapter one, we discussed the collision aspect, but let's go into more detail on this. So let's say our kick and our bass are overlapping too much. Again, I'll create a filter over the needed range, and then I'll make it dynamic, and I'll set the side chain as the trigger. Now this way, whenever the kick hits, the offending frequency range will be attenuated on the bass. Let's take a listen to it. Understanding Fab Filter Shortcuts The Pro-Q3 has a lot of useful shortcuts and hotkeys. For example, when picking a frequency, I could type out 1K, then press Enter for 1000 Hz, or A4 to get 440 Hz. This way I can quickly find any note or any frequency that I want to affect. When altering the frequency gain or the Q, if I hold down Shift, it'll slow down the rate of change, making it easier to find a specific value. To quickly mute a band, I could hold Option and then click it, or if I want to change its Q value and its frequency simultaneously, I could hold down Command or the Windows key depending on what you're using, and change the Q by moving it up and down, or the frequency by moving it left and right. Lastly, if I select a band and hold Option, I can use my mouse wheel to make the band dynamic and select a positive or a negative range. So let's take a listen to a track and use some of these shortcuts in real time. If you have a mix that you need to have mastered, send it to us to receive a free mastered sample of it with the link in the description. Thank you so much for watching.